What's up guys, this is Greyhat. I'm here with the Death Star 2 HUD. We're going to be running some basic database analysis on preflop scenarios. Here we have a database provided by a student. Let's double click to fire up the Death Star 2 interface. It's always a good starting point to check out the main panel under the DS panel tab. That gives us the broadest possible overview. Then we can head to the individual tabs for more specific data. In terms of preflop, standard stats to check are VPIP, PFR, 3-bet, fault to 3-bet, cold call, and some of the other stats as well, such as 4-bet, fault to 4-bet, etc. Let's start with the VPIP PFR. You can see that this player is playing 28-22. Now, these stats are acceptable. They're not necessarily indicative of a leak, but it's worth noting that they are on the loose side. There are plenty of winning players who have VPIP PFR, more like 2520, even 2318. So this potentially gives us a clue in terms of what type of leaks we expect to encounter as we go through the stats. For example, an obvious one is, is this particular hero open raising too wide? On the main panel, on the top row, we have that yellow stat 51. That's the ATS or attempt to steal. It's the average of how often a player open raises from the small blind button and cutoff positions combined. Most winning players have an ATS of around 40%. We can see this here has an ATS of 51%. So immediately interested if there are any leaks in terms of basic open raising strategy. This is often a very good starting point. It's one of the most common situations we'll encounter. Simply the hand gets folded around to his preflop. We have to decide whether or not to open raise. So now we can head to a more specific tab. Let's have a look at open raise. It's possible with the Death Star HUD to cycle through each of the positions and see our associated raise first in frequency along with a representation of the whole card grid. We can see here that Hero's button RFI is 68%. In terms of what we'd expect as standard, probably close to 48 to 55% is a standard button RFI range for winning players. If we have a look at the whole card grid. See, there's definitely some organization or arrangement here. You can see that hands towards the bottom of the grid are definitely opened less frequently than hands in the center of the grid. Notice more frequently open hands are in a solid green color, while less frequently open hands are in a translucent green color. It's very likely this particular hero is open raising too aggressively on the button. Generally, button aggression is good, and we do want to look for opportunities to steal the blinds there's a good chance this hero is probably taking it slightly too far. So although there's sometimes a justification to open raise the button with something like 9 do soft suit, for example, we wouldn't expect trash hands to be opened with the frequency that they're being opened currently. There's probably some overly speculative button opens. We check the other positions. We have cutoff, 35. Standard cutoff RFI is around 27%. So again, we see this overexpansion, this overadjustment. See that hands like 6 3 suited are apparently standard open raises for this hero. Hijack, we're looking at 18% generally for a winning player. This hero has 20, so only slightly too wide now. Low jack, otherwise known as UTG, we expect 13 14. This particular hero has 16. So, examples of hands that don't necessarily have to open from UTG, things like pocket 2s, 3s, 4s, we don't have to open every suited ace. We don't have to open holdings like 6-5 suited. We don't have to open ace-10 off suit. And we definitely don't have to open things like queen-4 off suit. So you can see here it's pushing it slightly wide here as well. Small blind, we see a similar story. Most winning players are going to have around 40% RFI from the small blind. Sometimes slightly higher. There are winning players with 45 or even 48%. See here it's really pushing his opening range wide with 56 open. We can also see something else going on here. If we have a look at the whole cards grid, notice that there are green hands and there are blue hands. So the blue hands represent small blind completes. Now this partly explains why here is VPIP is so high at 28, because even when he doesn't open raise a hand in the small blind, he's actually just completing or limping in the small blind, which is perfectly acceptable in some games, but it does drive that VPIP value up. So that's an acceptable reason why VPIP might be slightly higher. An example of a non-acceptable reason why VPIP is high is we're simply open raising too many hands, which is what's happening here. We should keep that in mind as we look at some of the other stats. For example, a common side effect of open raising too wide 
is it becomes too difficult to defend against three bets. If we have a look at this player's full to three bet stat, we'll see it's 64%. We can once again head to the fold to preflop three bet tab to get a more specific breakdown of what's going on here. We can see the fold to three bet by position. Now of special interest here are the small blind and button fold to three bets. We have small blind fold to three bet 72, button fold 71. Now it's not correct to fold this much to three bets, but part of the issue is if we open too wide, it's going to be very difficult to have a more appropriate 55 to 60 percent fold to three bet. And that's what we should generally have. If you check the Death Star too hard yourself, we expect to see somewhere in the region of 55 to 60 percent for each position. Can sometimes be okay if we fold slightly above 60 percent, especially in the late positions, but we don't want it to be 71 or 72 percent. That means we're folding too frequently when facing three bets. On this output, we can also see here is four bet range. It's 1.5%. And we expect winning players to have a four bet range between about 3 and 5%, usually around 4%. Now, it's certainly not a big deal if you're playing low limits and you have a 1.5% four bet range. That's not a problem. Although it is possible, even at lower limit games, to have a 4-bet range of around 4%. The trick here is to make sure that we use a depolarized range, i.e. we don't really 4-bet bluff, apart from against specific opponents. Um, we essentially 4-bet an extended value range, rather than 4-bet bluffing against unknowns. So we can see this hero so far opens slightly too much, folds slightly too much to 3-bets, and doesn't 4-bet enough. These are not necessarily critical problems, but they will be eating into Hero's win rate. Now let's have a look at situations where we face an open. So far we've looked at the scenario where we open raise and potentially face a 3-bet. What happens when someone opens before us and we have the option to either call call or 3-bet? Let's return now to our main panel. We can see here that Hero's call call stat is 14%. Now in terms of what we'd expect for a winning 6-max reg, this stat should usually be around 12 or 13 percent. So it does seem that Hero might be cold calling slightly too wide. Once again, let's head to the cold call tab to get a more specific breakdown of what's going on here. Let's check out the cold call stats by position. We have big blind cold call 32, small blind 5.6, button 9, cut of 8.7, hijack 7.8. What would we expect for these values? Well, let's just say most of the values are fairly typical. Hijack, we might expect 6 or 7. Cutoff, we might expect 7 or 8. Button, perhaps 10 to 12 percent. So we could actually cold call more on the button. Small blind, 6 or 7 percent. Depending on your preference, there are some players who don't really cold call very much from the small blind. It might have 2 or 3 percent. That's fine. The big blind is where things deviate a bit further. We typically expect to see around 26 percent cold call from the big blind and we can see here it has 32% cold call. So it's possible that here it is defending his big blind slightly too wide and it's worth keeping in mind that this could be especially the case in lower limit games where rake is high and we have to pay a lot in extra rake for the privilege of trying to defend our big blind wide so it might just not be worth it at lower limit games to have a big blind cold call of 32%. We may find that some of the weakest hands as part of that cold calling range are actually not making us money. You can see there are situations where calling things like 7 deuce offsuit, 8 3 offsuit. Now, admittedly, these could be big blind versus small blind, small open scenarios, for example, and we should defend wide. But I'd say overall, this particular defending range could be trimmed down and it would probably be good for win rate. It can also be worth checking out how we defend against different sizings. We won't get into detail on this right now, but one thing that is a definite leak is not adjusting our defending range based on the size of the open. So let's just check to see if here appears to be doing this. We're going to take defend big blind versus small blind as an example. We can see against the min raise, hero cold calls 86% and 3 bets 10%. Against a 2.5x small blind open, hero cold calls 38% and 3 bets 20%. So what we're seeing there is a nice adjustment based on the size of the open. So when villain min raises, hero defends a lot. When villain 2.5 x's, hero trims down that defending range. 
So at first glance it looks good, but let's have a look at the next category. How does Hero defend against a 3x open? We have 40% cold call and 21% 3-bet. So now is where we run into the potential issue. Here it doesn't appear to be changing his defending strategy based on whether Villain makes a 2.5x open or a 3x open. So he's adjusting against one sizing but not against the second sizing. In fact, against the 3x open have a 61% defending range, that's 40% cold call and 21% 3-bet. Here is actually defending too many hands in the big blind and facing a small blind 3x open. You'll see the cold calling range right here on the screen. One thing we could do is we could take this range and we could compare it to our pre-flop charts and see which hands we're defending which are too wide to defend big blind versus small blind 3x. Finally, let's have a look at 3-bet pre-flop. This is our other option when facing an open. We can cold call or we can 3-bet. Let's have a look at 3-bet by position. So we have 3-bet on the button, 11. 3-bet from the small blind, 11. Big blind, 9.2. Cut off, 7.2. And hijack, 3.7. So what would we expect for these values? Hijack, usually 4%. Can sometimes even be as high as 6%. Cutoff, we would expect 6%, maybe slightly above, so 7.2 is fine. Button, we'd probably expect between 8 to 10%, so we're a little bit over aggro on the button potentially. But if you recall, we actually saw that Hero wasn't cold calling very much on the button, so we can see where those extra hands are going. There are probably some hands that should be cold called that are being 3 bet at the moment on the button. So we're a little bit over aggro on the button, and the same is true in the blinds. We have small blind 3 bet of 11%, which is very aggressive and big blind 3 bet of 9.2%. Now we do sometimes see good winning players with small blind 3 bet of 11 or 12%. In my experience, it's not really worth it to play like this, just because we're going to be in a lot of tough 3 bet pot out of position situations with a wide range. Not to mention, if we're playing lower limits, this is a really good way to drive up the amount of rake that we pay. There's a common misconception floating around, by the way, which is... If we 3-bet more aggressively, we end up paying less rake because our opponent sometimes folds. But there's really simple maths associated with this. It's not difficult to demonstrate that the more we 3-bet, the more rake we pay. We can demonstrate this through maths. Plus, if you've worked with a lot of databases, you'll see the very clear trend that when a player has a database with a 3-bet stat that's quite high, let's say 9 or 10%, that particular player ends up paying more rake over the sample than someone who has a passive 3 bet stat such as 5 or 6 percent. We actually want to go somewhere in the middle, we want our overall 3 bet stat to be around 7 or 8 percent and in order to achieve this it's fine to have 8 percent small blind 3 bet, 8 percent big blind 3 bet and button 3 bet somewhere between 8 to 10 percent. It's not necessary to 3 bet this aggressively in order to beat the games. The other side effect of this is that Hero, because he's 3-betting so aggressively, is falling way too much to 4-bets. We have 79% fall to 4-bet, but expect to see something close to 55-60% at the lower limit games. So similar to the issue with open raising, Hero open raises too wide, and therefore folds a lot to 3-bets. We have the same kind of problem here. Hero 3-bets too aggressively, and therefore can't defend himself effectively when facing a 4-bet. Okay, hopefully this has given you some ideas on how to troubleshoot pre-flop play using the Death Star HUD. Thanks for watching guys, good luck at the tables.